Have you ever wondered how best to add subscription services to your current business or how to start a subscription service? I'm your host, Zachary Alexander, and this is the Subscription Maker Podcast live in Living Color. We will be talking about the three mandatory uh, business units that you need to be successful in the industry as it is today. Now, as a lot of you know, most people like to talk about the big launch. You know, they talk about, do I do a big launch? Do I get all my friends and and family together and have a an event? You know, do I go out and find people who are who are a lot more famous than I am and bring them in for a big launch? And I'm not that excited about the big launch. I'm not excited because I don't know what the resource allocations are for the subscription service I'm starting. You know, if that would make me nervous because whenever you start a new service, little things go wrong. Things that worked when you were in beta don't work when you are actually asking people for their money. So the big launch is great if all you care about is getting people in the door. The big launch is great if all you care about is getting people to sign up. You know, once you've got their money, you know, in normal businesses, the mo- once you've got their money, then you're done. You know, you provide customer service, you know, as needed. But basically, your job is simply to get their money. That's different with the subscription service. One of the things that could happen is that you could leave your subscribers upset. They could get upset that the resources that you promised them aren't available to them. They could get upset that someone else got a better price. Uh, You know, a a lot of people like to use gimmicks. You know, we've talked about the big launch as a gimmick, an event as a gimmick. We also have to talk about uh, discounts as a gimmick. I think one of the the hardest thing to confront as as uh, a subscription maker is Black Friday. I mean, there are a lot of people who assume that you're going to offer a deal on Black Friday. So if you don't offer that deal on Black Friday, they're not interested. You will find people who will wait until major holidays before renewing or after major holidays to make sure that you are not actually uh, providing a discount uh, at that point. You know, they want to know, is this going to be cheaper during the holidays? You know, Black Friday, You people won't renew because they want that Black Friday discount. Now, if you added, uh, if you, you provide a discount any other time, that's going to contell when you can get people to renew because they will figure it out. You know, word of mouth is it works in your favor and against you. It works in your favor when you got a good product and and everybody wants it. But it also works against you when you are offering coupons or discounts. People will find a way to get that discount. And if they don't, then they will get mad. So now you start off day one with an angry subscriber. And it's hard to get them to stick around if they're already angry. Now, for me, I like to to actually think about what I like to call what I like to call the um, near term investments. I think that that's the best way to actually manage and react to downturns in the market. I think that's the best way to react. So basically, take take the the pricing issue off the table. So once you set, you know, basically you've looked around and you have um, determined, you know, what other people are charging, then you got to look at what other services are available at that same price point. So if you have to compete with a Netflix, Disney, or some other major product or service in that, you know, 
at that same price point. It doesn't have to be really at the same, um, it doesn't have to be a similar product. It just has to be a similar price point because that will cause people to determine, you know, do I want this or do I want that? Do I want this? Um, do I want this at, at this price point or do I want it at, at, at another? I meant to show you this. I meant to show you this big launch, you know, cause that that's, that's my biggest fear is that a lot of people will be running around hoping to do a big launch. Now, when I say that near-term investments are an issue, I also are, are a potential benefit that that's the way I want to go. What I also have to say, I have to add the standard disclaimer. You know, basically, I am not an investment professional. I present my opinions for the sake of conversation. You should consult your professional investment advisor before you make any decisions about where to put your money. You know, that needs to be front and center and clear to everyone that I am not someone who is trying to give you investment advice. I'm talking to you and pro providing my opinions on how I see our, how I see the subscription business world shaping up over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. You know, 18 to 24 is near term. So we can pretty much, we can talk about where we are over the next, you know, six to 12 months. You know, we've already, that, that's already baked in as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, that's, that's baked in. So you can make a case that everything that you see today, you know, where you are today, where your business is today is based on decisions you made, um, six to 12 months ago. And that you're simply living with that environment. It may not be good, you know, unless you, you rolled out of uh, another company, and had to uh, start a business in a hurry. With that caveat, basically what you see in front of you today, the what's been manifested, the things you're dealing with, the, the problems you have to handle every day, that basically is a result of the investments you made 12 to 18 months ago. So having said that, the reason I wanted to talk today was about uh, what I call the three mandatory business units for subscription businesses. Now, generally, the reason we want to do that is because a lot of people think, well, I've got time. Well, I've got the ability to go back and, and fix whatever is not working. And I, I've known a lot of companies. I've, I've even worked for companies who have tried that. They have thought that they could go and they could work you know, they could work on something else and that, you know, eventually things would um, eventually things would settle down and they could get back on the right track. Well, I'm here to tell you, you never get back on the right track. There's never enough time to get it done. You know, what you end up doing is you end up creating a, a business which is not to scale which is not ready to scale, which will not scale, which basically has built in problems from the beginning. You know, there's a reason why you don't see model planes like the one on the screen here, you know, with oddly shaped uh, propellers and, and, and cockpits that are, that are misshapen, you know, that basically let the wind in. You don't see those at the airport. You know, even if you're on a small plane, it's still a plane that is airworthy, that's worthy, that will, that, that is capable of air transport. It's not a model. You know, so when you're building your company, when you're building your subscription business, it should not be a model. It should be something that is capable of, of growing, of scaling and becoming bigger and not collapsing under its own weight. Now, in order to do that, we get to talk about my, you know, basically all companies have what have my, my friends here. 
And these two, these, my friends, you know, basically there's customer acquisition and customer success. Basically all companies have that in common. They have a customer acquisition piece and a customer success piece. You know, these people, you know, you've met them at the, uh, the local rotary club or maybe at the, um, at, at the chamber of commerce. And so let's talk a little bit about them. So customer acquisition, customer acquisition is responsible for sales and marketing and full cycle upscales, upsells, but we won't let's, let's hold on the full cycle upsells because that's something I want to talk about later. But right now we want to talk about sales. Sales is sales is the bedrock of most traditional companies. Sales is where the deals are done. This is the handshake. And this is important when you're first starting your subscription business. When you first start your subscription business, you need a strong sales push. You don't need a launch, but you need a strong sales push. You need a continuous flow of subscribers so that you can respond to problems, uh, add in additional resources when needed, but you don't want to. So you need those salespeople up front. Now, there are some caveats, w- w- which we'll get to later, but salespeople don't work well without marketing. And we separate the two. So sales the salespeople are the people who handle the relationship in the beginning. They are the face of the organization at the beginning. They are good at that. They are not good at customer support in general. They are good at convincing people to say yes. Marketing, on the other hand, those people are good at convincing people to raise their hands. They're good at convincing the, uh, of bringing awareness of, of letting people to, of introducing your subscription service to the world. That's marketing. Uh, they may run webinars, you know, if you're, uh, if you are a solopreneur, you know, that's your marketing piece. The sales piece is what happens later. That's the follow-up. Those are the people who get on the phone and say, Hey, I talked to you here at this event. Uh, you were at our webinar. And I need you to, you know, I just wanted to know what you thought of it. That's sales. Marketing is, I want to, um, I want to let you know this new thing that's coming down the pipe and you, you just don't want to miss it. You don't want to be, you don't want to miss out because it's going to save you a bunch of money. It's going to make you a bunch of money. You're going to be in a lot better place. If you, if you watch this, if you understand where I'm coming from here. Now, the next group of people which you also know, you've seen them, customer service. Well, maybe you haven't seen them. Maybe those are the guys who hang out in the background. You know, maybe those are the guys that, um, that, that you don't know. You talk to them. Everybody talks to customer support eventually. Now their main function though is delivery. They make sure that all the, uh, everything gets where it needs to go. Everybody gets their, uh, gets their software. Everybody gets their password. That's delivery. They also, in, 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 a, they also are responsible for reporting in some instances. You know, what I mean reporting is they, they keep the matrix, you know, they, 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 they are responsible for the customer satisfaction survey. They are responsible for determining if the organization has met its goals in regard to the customer. Is the customer happy? Now, in order to do that, they do onboarding. You know, they basically go out before, hopefully before the actual uh, service goes live in an enterprise environment. Um, they provide training videos in a, basically in an environment where you're selling, um, you're selling some type of SaaS or service as a, uh, software as a service, uh, product. 
they're also they, you know the videos are also good if you're doing uh, if you're doing coaching and you have some type of group coaching environment. Customers customer success, you know, in the old world it was all about the salesperson. Salespeople were gods. You know, they were the people, nothing happens to until sales, until something sells, right? In the new world, in this subscription world, it's customer success that are the real rock stars. I mean, they are the people who, who make money by making sure that everybody's happy. They benefit with, with, with what I like to call incidental, um, incidental sales. These are upgrades. These are feature upgrades. Uh, these are upgrades to a different tier, you know, more seats, more capacity, you know, incidental. It's it's not like they're going out and they're striking up new deals. No, what they're doing is they're finding opportunity within the current customer base. And that is the real trick to growing a subscription business. Subscription businesses grow by expansion. They don't grow by um, subscription businesses don't grow because you bring in more customers. They can in the initial stages, but eventually the cost of customer acquisition is too, is too, is too expensive. You know, basically you've got things uh, you, you budgeted for X amount of dollars for customer acquisition. And because of some change, maybe, you know, Maybe the medium has gone up. Maybe maybe uh, the channel uh, costs have gone up. You know, you were using uh, you were using one social media platform, and they increased their prices substantially. Uh, or you may were you you may have been using a um, you may have been using an influencer, and that influencer has in, increased his part his or her pricing. So. That's why you can't rely on customer acquisition to build or grow your business. On the other hand, you can rely, on the other hand, you can rely on customer success. Customer success is there day in and day out. They are the ones that do all the handholding when you're starting out. They answer the phones when things are going wrong. They are there all the time. And they should be treated as such. Because if you're good at customer success, then this is where your growth is going to come from. You're going to get more people upgrading. Uh, there is a, a measurement of that called uh, net dollar retention. Net dollar retention is how you you figure out how much you... you it, I mean, it's a basic calculation. It's basically... How much were the people worth at, you know, at some period last year and how much are they worth now? So if, I mean, basically everything, everything that's been done, you know, upgrades, downgrades and, and churn people leaving the, uh, organ people leaving your program. When you get all, when it's all said and done, you say, okay, I had, this is how much I'm making now. And this is how much I made from the same group of people last year. And when you make that, when you make that calculation, you sh that number should go up. It shouldn't go down. It should actually go up because you should be providing more opportunity for your customers. Okay, let me repeat that. That number should go up. That is what we are expecting. You want to be providing more opportunity for your customers, for your subscribers to buy from you. And that actually leads us into our, th our third group. You know, this is the piece that basically only subscription businesses have. And that's what I like to call a subscription flywheel. This is the heart of your expansion opportunity. It represents your expansion potential. Now, I told you that expansion was really about, um, that's growth. So your growth potential, your expansion potential is held within this group. And it's called the subscription 
I like to call it the subscription flywheel group. Sometimes people put it within the customers, um, customer success group, but I think that it, it deserves its own. And I'll tell you why, because subscription, the subscription flywheel group, that group is responsible for service discovery. Service discovery is the process of going out and finding out what new things your customers are willing to buy from you. That's a different conversation. That's a conversation that's done in communities. So these are community developers. You know, you need a community. You need an online community, not so that you can basically talk about what's what's needed. You know, it's not so that you can go out and, and market to these people, gaining, gaining their attention, driving awareness. No, you need an online community so that you can basically hear from them, be a part of their conversations, because it's those conversations which which allow you to grow bigger. Now, I, I think on a on a future uh, on a future video, we'll talk about um, we'll talk about category pyre, um, We'll talk about categories and how to become a category of one. But right now, what we want to talk about is just that this that entire discovery process, service discovery. This is also where your near-term investments live. These are the pieces that are put in place, um, uh, kind of like um, these are the breadcrumbs. So if there is a breadcrumbs, if you're placing breadcrumbs for success, this is where it lives. You're doing things not with the understanding that they're going to show up on, on the uh, bottom line within 12 months. You're doing things that are going to show up, uh, you know, 18 to 24 months. You know, you, they're, they're far enough out that the market can move around. They're far enough out that you don't have to, you, you don't have to basically rely upon them for profitability, but they can be brought into into uh, into your your main business if you need to. You know, if you start to see that one of your services is show, is is being a little soft, then that's when you need your near term investment, whatever that is. You know, if you've got, like I said, if you've got five websites that are out there, if you've been aging, you know, basically you put five. Uh, five posts on that web, those websites, and you just let them sit to see if anybody has any interest in those concepts. If you find that they do, now you can bring that. You can add some additional, uh, po uh, some additional uh, posts to that website, and you can grow it over time. You know, over eighteen to twenty-four months. If you start to see some some up some uplift. Then and you have a, a service which is showing some softness, you can bring that in earlier. And that's why it's important to have a near-term investment strategy. You need to have a portfolio of assets which mature and are capable of generating income over time. You know, so that is there is a continuous pipeline of assets which are coming which are capable of generating income. I'm not talking about going out and investing in the stock market. I'm talking about actually creating assets and having them age, allowing them to grow and mature within the market so that your subscribers, your customers, or customers in those segments can basically have at it and can kick the tires. And as they give you feedback, then that feedback turns into product enhancements. And at some point, what happens is that we go back to something we talked about earlier. We go back to full cycle upsells. So basically, your customer, your, your subscription flywheel, those people, the people who are part of that group, they hand this new service over to customer acquisition. 
And then customer acquisition works its magic. But it's not a part of the primary, at, at this point, it's not, of the, it's not a part of the primary service. But you need real professionals. You know, you need your top line folks in this full cycle of sales because you are going to be competing against people who are using their full-time people. They are not going to be the people who are just, you know, okay, whenever, you know, whoever's available. No, they're going to have a campaign and they're going to be rolling out services similar to the one that you're trying to roll out, you know, and you're trying to do expansion and they're just trying to create a beachhead so they can get a foot in the door. So that's why uh, customer, that's why the subscription flywheel hand stuff over to customer acquisition. Because when it's all said and done, you know, we don't know what's going to cause people to be successful. But what we do know is that if we do enough stuff right, eventually, we don't know, but eventually things go well. So I'd like to thank you for joining me. If, um, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Uh, hit the subscribe button and the uh, and and the notification button so that you can get uh, or so you'll be let so people will uh, you you'll know the next time I go live. I appreciate your time. Have a good day.